Hello everybody, welcome back to Visit Jeju Global. Uh, most domestic travelers uh, rent cars when they come to Jeju. Uh, it is the most efficient and comfortable way of traveling. Uh, and to be honest, public transportation isn't that reliable outside the main cities, uh, even for locals. So recently we've been uh, recommending overseas travelers to uh, rent electric vehicles. Uh, there are two reasons for it. First, uh, the cost of charging an EV is cheaper than filling it up at the gas station. Second, most EVs come with built-in English language GPS, so you don't have to worry about getting lost in Jeju. Uh, this is very important because Google does not provide a real-time GPS or real-time navigation with Google Maps in Korea. Uh, this means you will have to use a Korean uh, GPS application, uh, but they generally don't provide English service. So in this video, I will show you how to set up and use a standard GPS unit as well as how to charge your EV. EVs are quite common in Jeju nowadays. Uh, you can easily find EVs from Hyundai, Kia, Tesla, Chevrolet, among others. But I strongly recommend that you rent EVs from Hyundai and Kia because only these companies provide GPS systems with real-time navigation in both English and Korean. You can choose from EVs like Ionic 5, Kona, EV6, Nero, and Seoul. I rented an Ionic 5, but other EVs from Hyundai and Kia have the same system, only with different layouts. Now let's go through how to set up and use the GPS on this car. Uh, first of all, you will have to change the language setting to English. On the main screen, look for the settings button that resembles a gear wheel. Press it, and there will be another gear icon. Press it, then look for the language button and select English. Press the home button and now you'll find everything is in English. Let's find your destination on the GPS. You can either click on the navigation menu from the home menu and press places, or simply press the magnifying glass button on the map. There are two ways to look up your destination, either by entering in the name or the address. The Korean writing system involves a rather complicated combination of vowels and consonants, so make sure to double check the spelling of your destination. I'm going to look for Songsan Ilchulbong Peak on the GPS. You can type in a part of a word or just a word, and the GPS will give suggested locations. Before making your choice, be sure to double check it with the address. If it's what you're looking for, uh, click on Set as Destination to start navigating. The GPS will show you the entire route on the map and it will begin providing route information. Passes through general road and country road number 1119. Many roads in Korea share similar names, so make sure to type in the whole address. Now the GPS will narrate the route in English. In 300 meters, drive straight. It will also tell you where to slow down for speed bumps and speed cameras. A speed bump is ahead. In 400 meters, speed limit is 50 kilometers per hour. You can also find clearly marked directions on the instrument panel, uh, so you don't have to take your eyes off the road as much. Here's a tip on how to make the most of the GPS system. Uh, click on menu on the map and choose nearby info. Click on POI categories and it will let you find different types of places that might be nearby like EV charging stations, uh, fast food restaurants, and convenience stores. If you click on POI display, you can choose the types of places you want to display on the map. This can be very convenient for travelers who are new to Jeju. Now let's go through steps to charging an EV. Uh, the latest EV models can go about 500 kilometers before they need to charge. Uh, so if you're staying in Jeju for less than three or four days, uh, you probably don't have to worry about looking for a charging station. Uh, but Jeju is bigger than you think, uh, so knowing how to charge your EV can be helpful in an emergency. Charging an EV is the most tricky part of using it. Car rental companies have different policies regarding EVs. Uh, some will not rent EVs to foreigners, some will provide you with a charging membership card, and some will not. I rented this EV from Lotte Rent-A-Car because they are the only company that has an English website and rents EVs to foreigners. But Lotte does not provide a charging membership card, so you will have to use your credit card to charge your EV. The difficulty is that not all chargers accept credit cards. 
And the charging membership card is not universal, meaning you need the right membership card uh, for a particular charging station. So although there are plenty of charging stations in Jeju, you will have to take care to find the right one for your EV. You can easily locate a charging station from the GPS. You can find nearby charging stations on the map or click on menu on the map and choose nearby info. Click on POI categories and choose EV charging stations. Or from home screen, choose EV and click on the icon that looks like an electric plug. The GPS will list all the nearby charging stations. There are two types of chargers, an AC charger, which is a slow charger, and a DC charger, a fast charger. AC chargers don't have time limits, but they are very slow, so make sure to look for DC chargers. You can simply filter out AC chargers from the GPS. Uh, click the filter menu and simply deselect the AC charger option. You can also choose which operators you want to see on the map, but unfortunately it doesn't show which chargers accept credit cards. Most hotels, tourist sites, and public offices have charging stations that accept credit cards now. I rented this EV for four days and discovered that public offices and public attractions are the best places to charge your EV. They have credit card ready DC chargers and there's a one hour time limit per parking spot so chances are that you will find an empty charger or have just a short wait. Hotels and private tourist sites provide DC chargers, but the fee can be higher than that of charging stations at public offices. The fee for a DC charger at one hotel I tried was 481 per kilowatt hour, whereas at public offices it was only 291. Some chargers provide English services, but even if they don't, uh, the process is basically icon-based, so it's not too difficult to use. This is a commonly found DC charger, one which lacks an English interface. Here's how to use it. Choose the type of plug that fits your EV. For the Ionic 5, it is DC combo. Choose the method of payment and choose the total amount you'd like to pay. You can see how much electricity you're charging. Insert your credit card. Once the payment is approved, take the right plug from the charger and connect it to the socket on your EV. A DC charger limits your charging time to 40 minutes per session. Uh, if that's not enough, you will have to use another DC charger in the parking lot. Uh, it's very important to remember that parking at a DC charger is prohibited. You can keep your EV there while charging up to one hour in total. If you go over that limit, a security camera will activate and a 100,000 won fine, which is equivalent to about 80 US dollars, would be recorded. The average energy consumption of an EV is about 6 kilometers per kilowatt hour. And with 40 minutes of express charging at a DC charger, you can charge about 30 kilowatt hours, which means you will get at least 180 kilometers of range. The IONIQ 5 comes with a 72.6 kilowatt hour capacity battery uh, with a fully charged battery that translates to about 430 kilometers. As I said earlier, uh, with this range, you probably won't have to charge your EV for four or five days. And more good news, it cost me a little over 8,001 or just about seven US dollars to charge 30 kilowatt hours. That means uh, you can drive 100 kilometers for about four US dollars. This is only about 40% of what you would have to pay for even a very efficient internal combustion engine car in Korea. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope you found it helpful for your next trip to Jeju. Uh, if you have any questions about this video or Jeju in general, please leave a comment below. Uh, and we'll be back with more informative videos very soon. Uh, thank you for watching and bye for now.